So all the things we're going to have today are stories from the Bible about the Lord Jesus and they're stories that the Lord Jesus told. Now the stories that the Lord Jesus told are called parables. They're good stories, they're interesting stories, but a parable is a story that's got a meaning. It isn't just to make us interested, it, it's to let us know something that's important. And the Lord Jesus told stories not just to amuse people, but so that they would learn things about God and about God's word and about ourselves and about how we can know God. So we're going to have some stories this week and they're all going to be stories about the Lord Jesus. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a, I have no idea what the Lord Jesus looked like. We, we don't have a picture of the Lord Jesus in our Bibles. Um, you might have a Bible with pictures in it, but we don't really know exactly what the Lord Jesus looked like. But this is something maybe like he looked like. He would have dressed a little bit like this and he'd have looked. He, uh, we, we know the Bible says he had a beard um, and, and he looked something like that, I guess. But anyway, it doesn't matter just what the Lord Jesus looked like, but it does matter that we can know him by trusting him in our hearts. And even though we can't see him because he's in heaven and, and we're down on earth, we can still know the Lord Jesus. We can speak to him and, and pray to him and he can forgive us for our sins and he can give us life. So even though we don't know what the Lord Jesus looks like, we can know him. So that's a wonderful thing, isn't it? The Lord Jesus told some stories and he, he told a story one day to some people. And th these, these people, I think they thought that they were quite good sort of people. Now, I don't know about uh, uh, who tries to be good. Do you, do you try and be good? Well, I try and be good. You know, I'm not always very good at being good, but I, I try and be good. It's, it's good to try and be good. Well, these people, they, they thought that they were OK. They were trying to be good. And um, maybe because they thought they were good, they looked at other people and they could see, do you, is there anybody in your class in school who's really naughty? Mm. There's always, now, is there anybody here and you are the one who's really naughty in your class in school? No, I hope not. Gosh. Well, do you know what? It's always hard to see when it's us who's the one who's doing wrong things. And the Lord Jesus said to some of these people, listen, you you look at other people and you tell them that they're doing things that are wrong. But really, he said, you need to remember that you need to be forgiven because you're a sinner too. And, and we're all sinners. That's why the Bible says that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. So the Lord Jesus said to these people, listen, it's not just hearing my words. It, it's It's doing them. The Lord Jesus doesn't want us just to listen to the stories he wants us to believe them and the Lord Jesus said it what matters is whoever comes to me and hears my word and does them see that, that's that would be three good things to remember whoever comes to me hears my word and does them so the Lord Jesus wants us to speak with him and, and he wants us to hear his word and we can hear his word by reading in our Bibles or listening to Bible stories, but not just to hear and he wants us to do. So the Lord Jesus said, you know, some people, when they hear my words, are wise. And some people, when they hear my words, are foolish. Who tries to be wise? It's good to try and be wise. Who tries to be wise? We should all try and be wise. Try and do what's sensible and right. Well, the Lord Jesus said, some people listen to my words and they are wise. And some people listen to my words and they're foolish. Did you know? Did you know that you can read the Bible and still be foolish? You can, you can read God's word and listen to what the Lord Jesus says and still be foolish. Because if you listen to what the Lord Jesus says, and if you read your Bible, and if you hear God's word, but you don't do what God says, well, the Bible says that's foolish. And the Lord Jesus tells us that we should be wise. So the Lord Jesus told a story about two men, and one of them was wise, and one of them was foolish. And they were both going to build a house. So it's not wise to build a house it's not foolish to build a house they were both going to build a house 
Now, I don't know if you can see my picture there, but they both look like nice houses. They both chosen a nice place. And these two men were going to build a house. So both of them found a place where they wanted to put their house. And both of them went and they got their bricks. Now, I don't know if they bought their bricks from a shop or if somebody made them for them, or maybe they made them themselves. Maybe they dug out the clay and they baked them hard in the sun and they made themselves a nice big pile of bricks. And then they laid out the line where they were going to build their house. And the one of them, this is where they were different. One of them, he started putting his bricks down straight away and pretty soon... It wasn't very long before you could look and you could see that he was building a house. There was the wall starting to come up. You could see the shape of it. You could see he'd left a gap for the door. You've you, you got you to gotta leave a gap for the door. Uh, and when he started getting up a bit higher, he left a little gap for the window. You've got to leave gaps for your windows. You know, if you lived in a house with no doors and no windows, well, you wouldn't be able to get back out. Or you wouldn't be able to get in in the first place. So this man, he, he built his house and you could see pretty soon that his house was taking shape. Was he the wise one or the foolish one? The other one, the other one, well, he, he laid out where he wanted his house to be. And you wouldn't believe what he did then. He wants to build a house. And do you know what he did? He got a spade. He got a spade and he started digging a hole. And he started digging a hole where his walls were going to be. He started digging a hole and he started digging a long hole, a long trench. And as he started digging, he went down and he went down and he went down and he went along the walls. And if you'd seen him, you'd have said, um, what, what are you doing? And he says, I'm building a house. And you think, you're not building a house. You're digging a hole. You can't, you can't, you're not going to live in a hole. That's a, that's a funny thing to do. That doesn't sound very sensible, does it? To to dig a hole when you when you want to build a house. But he dug down, and, and you think, well, are you are you looking for something? There's something down there. There's something down there, and he dug until he found it. Do you know what he was digging for? He dug down through the soft sand. He dug down through the earth. He dug down when it got a bit stony. He dug down until he reached solid rock. He dug down, and he had to dig deep. He dug down until he reached a solid rock. And then he started putting his bricks where he wanted his wall, in the hole, in the trench. He started building. So if you'd come along after a couple of days, you'd have looked and you'd have said, well, y your wall hasn't even reached the ground yet. I mean, you've been, you've been building for a couple of days, and so far, y y your wall haven't even reached as high as the ground that's no good. That doesn't seem like a very sensible way to, to build a house. Look, look at the other man. See, he's, he's finished his house already. He started on the ground and he built up and, and look, his house looks lovely. He's got nice doors and look, he's putting the roof on it now. A nice flat roof because it's not like in this country. I don't know what it looks like out of your window, but it looks rainy out of my window. But, but in that country, there's not so much rain. So you've got a nice flat roof. So you can go on the roof and sit on the roof if you like. And look, his house looks lovely. And your house, well, your house, you, you, you haven't even reached the floor level. You started building in a hole. And, and the Lord Jesus said, one of those builders was wise. And one of them was foolish. Who was the wise one? Well, the wise one was the one who dug the hole. The wise one was the one who dug down until he reached the rock. The wise one was the one who started building his wall, who built his house on the rock. And the Lord Jesus says to us that when we hear his words, it's like we're building, a ha we're building our life. We're building what we're going to do with our life. And the Lord Jesus said, when you hear my words, I don't want you just to hear. I want you to do. Somebody who hears my word and does them is like a wise man who, who digs down and he builds his house on a rock, not on the sand. No, what's wrong with building a house on the sand? I mean, the, the houses, look at them. They both look like nice houses. 
the, the, now that they're finished, the, the, the wise man and the foolish man, they both, fin they both look like nice houses. So what's the difference? Well, when you look at your house, you can't tell that it's got walls going down under the ground, can you? But it has. Do you know how I know that your house has got walls going down under the ground? Because if it didn't, it would have fallen over. You have to have a foundation. Otherwise, the house would just fall down. Well, anyway, one day, it probably wasn't very long, it did rain. You see, it doesn't rain very often, but it does rain sometimes. It rained. And the rain came down. And when the rain came down, the floods came up. Do you know that story? Do you know that song? from? Do you ever sing that one in Sunday school? The rain came down. The floods came up. The rain came down. And the floods came up. The rain came down. And the floods came up. And, and as the rain came down, well, the, the floods, the water started getting high. So there's water falling down on top of the house. And there's water coming up under the house in the soft ground. And then the wind started to blow. And the wind was blowing against the houses. The wind was blowing. And, and, and do you know what? Those houses, they've got rain falling on the top. They've got water floods coming up from underneath. And the wind is blowing against the side. And those houses, the wise man's house was getting wet and the wind was blowing. The foolish man's house was getting wet. And the wind was blowing. They, they were both the same. You know, and, and when you live your life, sometimes, you know, the rain falls. Sometimes the floods come up. Sometimes the wind blows. You know, when you live your life, if you trust the Lord Jesus, or if you don't trust the Lord Jesus, sometimes the rain falls. Sometimes things happen in your life and you think, I wish that didn't happen. Sometimes things happen that make you sad or sorry. But the Lord Jesus says, I want you to be trusting in me. The Lord Jesus wants you to trust him when things are good and when things are sad. He wants you to trust him when things are going the way that you want them to go. And he wants you to trust him when things aren't going. He wants you to trust him to be your saviour, to take away your sin and to give you life, not just for now, but a life that's forever in God's home in heaven. Well, the wind blew, the rain fell, the floods came up. And pretty soon, you could tell the difference between the house that the wise man built and the house that the foolish man built. Pretty soon, you could tell the difference. You know, the wind blew against that house that the wise man built. And the rain fell on its roof and the floods came up underneath. But it wasn't even shaken. It didn't wobble. Because it was built on a rock. So it was solid. The Lord Jesus said, that's like someone who trusts in me. That's like someone who hears my word and does what I say. And the Lord Jesus tells us that we need to trust him to, to, to forgive us, to be our saviour. We've all sinned. Some people won't admit it. But we know that we've all done wrong things, don't we? Even though we're not the naughtiest boy in the class or not the naughtiest girl in the school, we all know that we've done wrong things. But the Lord Jesus loves us and he wants us to admit that we've done wrong things and be sorry that we've done wrong things because he can save us he can forgive us and because he died for us the Lord Jesus came into the world to save sinners and he died on a cross nailed on a cross the Lord Jesus died for us to take the punishment of our sin now if we hear about that and we don't do anything about it that's foolish but if we hear that the Lord Jesus loves us, if we hear that the Lord Jesus died for us, and if we trust him, if we tell him we're sorry for the things we've done wrong, and we ask him to be our saviour, that's wise. You see, the rain fell, and the wind blew, and the floods rose against that house that was built on the sand, and it fell. As soon as the rain started and the floods came up, the walls had nothing to rest on. The walls just wobbled and they fell down. I've got a fence in my garden. And the post, the fence post, when you look at it, it looks like good solid wood. But just under the ground, it's completely rotten. It means the fence is wobbling. It's only a wooden fence, but I've got to replace that post. Otherwise, the fence will fall down. And you know, a house must have a good foundation. And your life 
needs a good foundation. And the Bible tells us that the Lord Jesus is a rock. He's somebody solid, somebody that you can rely on, somebody who doesn't move. And all the, the, the things that come into your life, you know, it's a good thing to know the Lord Jesus when you're young. 